Aha. Okay. Now. Oh, I should turn the, my high fire off. Okay. Right. Give me a few minutes, uh, a minute to work YouTube up. Hey everyone, by the way, I, I saw from the thing that I, I have a few viewers, few viewers already. Right, here we go, now I can see chat, that's great. Okay, oh crap. Let's not knock my mug off the desk. That didn't end well, very well last time. Right. Okay, so, I mean, I don't really have a something planned, like coding-wise to do today. I was gonna keep refactoring, but the thing is, I, I thought about this and I was like, Oh, hold on, this volume is way too loud, I think. Yeah, I think this is better. Okay, um, so I was thinking, right, like, live streaming is cool, but the thing is, I don't think live streaming coding is very useful. Um, because pretty much, like, okay, live streaming coding is fine, but the thing is, I can code better on my own when not explaining, and... The thing is, like, as a, a a method of, like, talking to other people about a project, live streaming is not very good either. Um, because, like, th there's not very much feedback, uh, <laughs> like, from you guys to me. Um, like, making update videos is a different matter, right? Because there's not hours and hours and hours of content for people to watch. Um, so I was thinking, you know, like, I, I don't want to stop doing live streams because, for one thing, they're an event and I enjoy doing them. Um, and you know, like, there's something to put on Reddit. <laughs> like, I can post about the project and they kind of have an excuse to do that. Um, which is, you know, good for any project to get advertising. Um, and so, yeah, I, I think between, like, the project just existing and me, work uh, like, people working on the code and, like, having a Discord, I think there's not much need for live streaming anymore. So here was my thoughts, right? Um, which is that I could live stream, keep live streaming once a week. Um, I, I'm not sure how many of you people like randomly turned up to the one on last Sunday. Um, Cause, uh, so that was for a, a different project. Um, so what I was thinking, right, is that I do live streams every week, but then I don't do sapling every week. Right. Because I, I kind of can't handle more than one live stream a week. They're, they're really ex like quite exhausting to do. And like, I, I, I don't know, I'm not, I'm not sure if there's, there's enough content and enough stuff to say, right? Um, so that, that would probably mean that I would do like one sapling live stream a month. Um, and then I think the, the other project that I did a live stream on on Sunday, that would be that, that would happen again like every third week, third su Saturday of the month or whatever. Um, and then I can do other things like playing Minecraft or something on the other days, right? So then it would be like sapling Minecraft, uh, weekly Minecraft, sapling Minecraft, so on. Ignoring times when there are five Saturdays in a month, which does happen. Um, so yeah, that, that's kind of my thinking. Uh, I don't know what you guys think. Um, I haven't seen anything in chat, so <laughs> I don't know whether that's just because people aren't thinking today or, or what, but uh, yeah, I, I think that would be a, a decent way of like, I don't know, optimizing time a bit more. Um, one thing that people could do if, if anyone's watching this um, now or later um, and knows how to make a permanent uh, Reddit link to, to, you know, like a Reddit page, um, uh, sorry, a Reddit group. Um, if anyone knows how to do that and can make a pull request with it in the readme of the GitHub repository, um, then that would be great. Um, because then more people will find that the Reddit, no, no not Reddit, Discord. Um, people will find the Discord page, the Discord group, and that's like the place to discuss stuff. Um, so yeah, here's the thing. I'm, I'm. That's I think my plan, um, and 
no one seems to have anything to say about it. Uh, if you do, then stick it in chat. Um, and it also gives me more, uh, not doing it every week gives it more like, more ceremony when I do, right? Okay, yeah, if it's better for me, then cool. Um, I mean, I, yeah, I'm not sure what other people think. Um, I was going to keep doing the refactoring today, or uh, I was also kind of working on implementing uh, in, uh, command mode as well, which has some interesting design decisions that I, I think would be cool. Um, I've also, uh, for the other live stream, I managed to get a better setup for uh, having a double screen, right? Oh, oh like for, for live streaming code, which is that if I slightly offset the split screen, um, then one is kind of the golden ratio start thing and it looks nice. And it means that I can have the text bigger, uh, like the code can be bigger and people can still see it. Um, so yeah, ooh, there's been a lot of refactoring happening. Um, I have kind of lost track of what's going on, to be honest. So, yeah, okay, right. Let's see, okay, let's keep whack doing error whack-a-mole. I mean, it, it's not, <laughs> doesn't make the most interesting watching, but it's got to be done at some point. Where, what's this? Oh, I think apparently Rust tells me to do this. Do I not? Just borrow oh, as ref, I think. Okay. Oh, ouch. What's going on here? Uh, so this is talk pairs. Oh, you know what? I forgot to post on Reddit about this. Um, uh, spawn Firefox, and let's do that. And then, oh, some more people have turned up. Hello. Um, oh, no. Ready Player One is a good film. I can recommend. I should probably just. Oh, wait, 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 wait. this is a disadvantage of. Um, it's not going live stream. Is it, yeah, this is an advantage of not having a double monitor setup, um, which is that when I'm live streaming, I can't I can't do stuff off camera, um, which is a bit awkward. Uh, also, let's grab the video URL. Uh, yeah. For a new text editor. For better text editor now on my YouTube channel. that my live stream is buggering up as well. Right. Stonks, right, okay, let's, let's go back to this. Um, so yeah, for, for those people who are new, um, I'm basically replacing the, the stupid arena allocator that we used to have 
um, with a uh, with RC. Oh, good. Um, I'm always like it's so weird. My internet kind of sometimes dies a bit, uh, which is very strange because normally, like you know, internet just collapses or it works. Um, but this is like I, I, I don't know. Like new pages won't load, but existing connections seem to work. Like I, I don't know. It's either um, it's either like TCP fails somehow where UDP doesn't, and therefore like the stream works fine, but um, oh, I don't know, it is very strange. Um, uh, right, you know what, this is not going to make good, good stream material. Um, I think, let's stash this, and let's jump over to command mode. Uh, again. Check out command mode. Uh, because this, I think, is more promising. Uh, right. So basically, this is like implementing command mode a la Vim, basically. Um, so in Vim, you can be editing something, and then if you hit colon, then instead of interpreting the, the keys as like inputs into the text, like you would in insert mode, like I can type into the buffer, or type, like, using the characters as uh, inputs, like, let's say we have some stuff and we want to replace a character, then it'd be like, replace A, or whatever. Um, that's normal mode. So now we have command mode, which is from normal mode, you press colon, and then type a command. Um, and then this string is interpreted now as a command. And obviously, sampling doesn't have that as of, if I check out the master branch, uh, get, check out master. Uh, so if I have this and then cargo run, uh, then colon does nothing. Um, and like all of the uh, Vim commands that you need, like write to a file and Q for quit, um, were implemented just as key bindings, which is, is terrible for the sake of Q. Uh, in fact, I think if I pull, I'm pretty sure some pull requests has happened. Okay. Wow. Uh, right. So, bare stuff has happened. Okay, right. So, so we've got stash there, and then master is... Yeah, I'm just, so I'm trying to understand uh, the graph of the commit, so I can see what rebasing would do. Okay, right. Yeah, because both master and this the stash that we have and command mode all branch off this commit. Um, so we need to rebase command mode on top of this, which should work fine, I think. So git checkout command mode and then git rebase master. Oh, of course. Uh, so where's the thing? Source config config. Oh, okay. This is this is not too bad because this is just this is key code. Uh, okay, so what is happening? This is, which is head and which is this? Because we've, said core direction. Oh, cross time. Okay, so the, the key code stuff is, uh, this is the stuff we want, except that we want control R to be um, undo instead. I'm pretty sure that's the only change. Okay, so this is what are the options? So wait, so what? 
this is what's this is control. Uh, what what's going on? So this is, should be char r redo. But aha, here we go. Right. So this is char. Huh? What? So how how does cross term deal with um, deal with control? That's the question. Does anyone does anyone watching happen to know that? Oh, whoops. Uh, whoops. Here we go. Uh, is this? Yeah, this looks better. Okay. Let's just whack this up. Uh, Rust cross term. Okay. So event. Oh, yeah, thanks. It's uh, uh, Hollow Knight fan art. And like, I, I kind of chose it because it matches the color scheme of the, the rest of my computer, right? Which is very, very blue. Uh, and so, yeah, got that. Uh, right, so does cross term not handle control? The control key properly. But okay, for the time being, let's just keep capital R as um, for oh, capital R for redo. Uh, my brain is being a bit slow today. Uh, okay, right, so when you take it, add source config. Oh, yeah, I didn't realize, by the way, that. Uh, Git will let you check in merge conflicts if you really try, which <laughs> I didn't think was supposed to be possible. Git replace. Continue. Oh, my days. Oh, my days. Okay. Ah, right. So I think the same thing will happen to source config. Um, Oh no, okay. Uh, okay, right, so we need this. We need both command types and, but we want, don't want this, but we do want the cross term imports instead of ty kit. Uh, is direction not found anymore? Oh no, we've got another. Uh, oh yeah, we've got exactly the same conflict again, which is just a question of getting rid of this, I think. Oh! Oh wow. Okay, but how does how does TUIKit handle it though? Because like uh, like obviously you can't you can't differentiate between oh control shift control shift is super annoying. Um, there's no way to differentiate that as far as I can tell. Um, I mean this is just an issue with using terminals as your UI method. Um, or a source editor mod. Ouch. Oh, I know what's happened. I, um, 
I, I did some <laughs> edits to this. Oh god, okay, right. Oh, I didn't know you could unpack like this. That's cool. Um, okay, right, so this is my old update and we have this stuff here. Uh, right, so basically I need to understand what's going on here. Okay. Uh, right, okay. Well, so I reckon... Okay, I reckon we'll just nuke this. Um, because the, the keystroke buffer just um, didn't work. So I think this should... Com it should compile, but I'll lose the ability to display the command mode. Um, Oh, looks like it's not compiling. Is it because of this? Uh -huh. What? So why is stuff draw? Hold on, something something messed up is happening. So, update display. Uh, right, this is spicy. So, there seems to be. Oh, did I just delete the wrong section of code? I think I might have done. Oh, doll, that's silly. Okay. Um, ah, right, so it's just keystroke log left. Oh, just off the bottom of the screen. Uh, right, okay, so we want, we basically want the top ones except that I added state change, so we need state change 2, and instead of this, this needs to be blue. Does this compile? That's the question. Right, not quite. Uh, so, ah, okay, because command mode, I, so I added command mode as a file. Um, so now I think I need to edit the command mode thing. Uh, so this is a TUI, I think. How does this work for normal mode? Oh, it, it's cross term. So, ah, so the, the transition function now takes key event instead of this, and match key, key event. Okay, so,
Ah, so how does this match the key events? Uh, parse command. Hmm, spicy. Okay, right. Let's. What are the things here? Is there literally. Uh, hmm. <laughs> okay, right. Let's. Why is, how does this even work? I, can we get first key? So can we, can, we, can I just use uh, key code, char C. Oh, okay, right, yeah, map key.code with this. Okay, right, now we're onto the right line. So this is delete. Yeah, so we want backspace for here, and then key code, enter. Ah, yes, that's because the, the action genuinely is unused. Okay, right. Uh, and now this should compile, I think. Excellent, right. Okay, in which case the rebase is complete. So, get rebase, continue. Oh, yeah, get yeah, add source. Continue. Okay, uh, <laughs> I should have named that commit a bit better. Okay, right, so we should be back on track, and if we cargo run, then we should see proper behavior now. Except it's weirdly squished. That's, that's odd. Um, uh, but yeah, it, it, it is working again, and if I press colon, nothing happens. What? Okay. Uh, Right, we need to fix this. Whereas, did I just get rid of my <laughs> my, my context switching? Um, anyway, this reminds me. There, there was a uh, some refactoring I wanted to do to the whole um, di like the whole mode system it was was a bit broken. Um, Uh, what is it? It's editor state. So basically, what, what, like the, the situation that we're in is that we have uh, editor normal mode, and this has lists its own set of commands, right? Um, so somewhere there's this big like match where we go, oh yeah, um, well, is it move cursor? Is it replace? Is it insert child? Um, and undo whatever, right? And then we perform the action on the tree directly, right? Because we, we get past editor. Um, but the thing is, like, this is this causes some jank because uh, basically the editor, the editor struct is like the overarching, like, singleton that's like, oh, here's all of the data related to the, the editor. Um, and then self has to be boxed because we can't, because, because the state is part of editor. So we can't pass self and editor at the same time because Rust complains. Um, because we could access self two different ways. We can access it through here or through editor. Um, and I was thinking like, like this is this is very janky. And this is all really because I wanted to return a new state out of the function. Um, but the thing is, if you made this instead, um, so it consumes self, uh, it borrows self, 
So, um, me. <coughs> Self. I'm sorry about that. Um, yeah, yeah, this is incompatible for trait. I know that. Um, and if we do this, and then instead of giving this direct access to editor, um, instead we pass through, we force it to return an action. Um, so that, that, that's basically like a combination of all of, uh, where is it? Um, so pretty much then we move wherever action is defined. Ah, oh, it's, it's, it is defined a normal mode. Okay, so we kind of push this action match into um, editor and then we just return the action straight away. Um, but obviously we might not have an action. Um, we might want to just like, we might have pressed like R or something, which is awaiting a character and doesn't want to do anything. So instead of doing this, we return option action. Oh, whoops, I pressed Q by accident. Oops, classic. Uh, uh, so we want to split source editor normal mode. And I think this is a better thing, except we don't want to, don't want to return the tuple. Uh, because also, we can get the logging for free if we do this. Um, because before we've got this, like, we've got to return some kind of logging thing that's like, oh yeah, um, what string needs to be displayed with what crack category. Um, and that's, if, if I get a new thing and make it bigger, if I go to sapling and cargo build, oh, it won't, oh yeah, of course. Um, <laughs> if I git stash and cargo build, oh, I mean cargo run, uh, there's basically, the, the reason why you'd want to do this um, is that the stuff in the top right corner of my screen here um, has to come from somewhere. Um, and it basically has to come from some part of the code that knows what it's like. It, it has to come from the action, right? Wherever the action is being performed needs to know what the action was called. Um, and this ends up with quite a lot of jank in the code. Um, and I eventually realized that actually, if we return an action out of the transition function, then we just get the action for free, right? We get the logging for free because whenever an action gets returned, we perform the action and log that at the same time, all in one go. And we don't have all these like crazy stuff. Um, as you can see, you'll see what I mean when we get, uh, we start refactoring. So we've got this and, oh yeah this. Uh, right, so currently let's just return normal mode action. So this would be super normal mode. Which is not, this is not ideal really. Um, oh, in fact we should probably import action anyway. So action will now, instead of being specific to normal mode and command mode, um, which is silly in the first place, right? Because, for example, quitting in Vim, I think shift, shift Z, like capital Z, Z, um, in normal mode quits and colon W, colon Q in edit, uh, command mode also quits. Um, so we have like, we already have times where we want to do the same command from both. And I was like, you know, why don't we just do the commands, like just have them have the same commands, right? And it doesn't matter that you could have like, you could bind some command to moving the cursor up. No one would use it, but you could, and that would be a lot cleaner because both transition functions, the, the, the transition wouldn't even be a transition anymore. It's you consume a key binding, basically. Um, oh, I get get stashed, didn't I? Get, get, get stashed pop. Uh, that will probably explain why a lot of this stuff. Edit. Um, okay, right. Uh, and now if I write. Yes. Okay. Ah, uh, yes, and it's updated. Right. So here we go. So yeah, we've updated state to be an action and then we just have to do it up here as well. Um, 
except uh, I, yeah sorry I, I'm not making sense we just we changed the how transition is defined um, there's one more is it source editor mod I think that has the last state Ah, oh, yeah, here we go. Okay, right. So we won't even need this once the refactoring is done, um, because this is this is the state that got used whenever there was a state transition. Because uh, during the state transition, if you remember, cell the the state itself, right? So the sapling's like modality, if you like, uh, was modeled as a state machine, right? So you have like the editors in normal mode, and then the user presses some keys. And then maybe it moves into command mode or whatever, and or it moves into like the quitted state, um, and that was just like that meant that whenever you did one of those transitions, um, you had to like you had to move the value out of the box uh, because it was owned by editor. Um, so it, like editor owned a box which owned the transition the state um, because it didn't know what the state was going to be at compile time because it, be, it could be anything that implements the the state right. Um, so we ended up in this like janky situation where you'd have to move the state out whilst you do the transition function so that you can reassign the return value. And it was like, what, like, that, that's just really horrible. And it meant that you, you can't just move out of a struct in Rust. You have to replace it with some default. Uh, so that's what intermediate state was. It was the value that you got, it was the value that got put into the box <laughs> whilst you were doing the transition. So this is not necessary anymore. Um, this, however, is going to cause some jank. Uh, let's... Oh, huge, huge loads of errors, right. Um, let's see, okay, so because we are... Um, Hold on, what, there's another one. Ah, because command mode is a thing, but we haven't changed that. Let's just, uh, let's just get rid of command mode temporarily. So I think this will, no? Hmm. Okay, well, this ought to be like this. So. Uh, what's it complaining about? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, right. So it's com it's a complaint from actually using the the thing. Okay, well that's okay. Um, we. Yeah. Okay. Um, So, right, so if we go back to normal mode, then this whole function should be become a lot easier. Um, so option action is what we return. Okay, so in, in this case, um, if you have no action, then we just return none, right? Um, because no action was executed. Um, we don't, we shouldn't need the tree. Um, Oh, we do need we do need config though. Uh, that should be okay, I think. So config is borrowed config. Uh, and this is have we imported config? Uh, right, okay, so we do need, we want to pass the configuration into the the key consume function. Um, editor state. So I want it to look like this, except here. Freight requires three parameters. Yes, I've got, got that. Um, uh, okay, where's the last? Where's the last state? Because we got rid of the one... Oh, there's the quitted state, isn't it? Isn't there? 
Uh, okay. Right, so we can just yank this and go here. Uh, yeah, so we need to use crate. Uh, and now we can just jump straight to using the config directly. Um, uh, so in the case of quit, I we don't. The side effect of only returning an action is that you can't do a state transition directly uh, in this function, right? Because um, a state transition involves kind of overwriting self with something of the wrong type, which like you can't do. Um, because let's say we, we were in normal mode and we pressed Q, that involves going into the quitted state, uh, which is like actually not what Vim does. If you split and then colon Q, then it closes the window, which is actually an action. Um, so therefore, oh wait, okay, yeah. So we, we don't want to do anything like this. Um, we uh, and for command mode as well, we don't need to do anything. Um, pretty much, I think, we just need to return some action out of here. Um, uh, we want to move all of this into the, the thing that's moved. Um, because now we've, we've got an action here, right? So we can return some action. And yeah, Rust C is unhappy, but the thing is, if we do this, then we've now kind of bubbled up the responsibility of running this action to the editor itself. So somewhere we need to move this match branch into editor. Um, oh, we wanted. This is this is happier. But let's go to editor mod, which is where the editor is used. And then where is state state transition? Ah oh, yeah, here we go. Right, so we have some uh, let's just paste this into temp.rs um, so that we, we can mess up the, the buffer as, as much as we like. Uh, okay, so now instead of this, we perform the transition and it returns an action, or maybe an action. Um, so we can do if let some action equals this. And okay, we just pass this directly in and self.config. And we need some brackets in here. Ah, okay, right, so now, now this is a local method on self.state, so self.state.transition. And borrow the config. So now we can do the match. We don't need to explicitly move the state. Um, uh, description category. Well, this is in here. Um, well, we always want to log the key. Um, so we log the key first. And then once we've done dealt with the action, um, we just like get the actions description at this point. So we log the entry and this will be action dot description and this will be action category. And none of this like crazy returning different cases thing. Um, aha, we're down from 11 to three errors. That's good. Um, so config is, uh, how well is it handling this? 
Oh, yeah, there's the, there are some naught cases in... Source editor, normal mode. Uh, we have a little bit more jank to do. So if the command is incomplete, then it results in no action. Um, Ah, we could do this as a, a, a nice case, uh, a thing. So we can do this as two matches now because um, if the, the count is zero, then we return none, just none. Um, and then if it's some other number of things, it's some action and it's something that's not zero, uh, which is more than zero because it's uh, assigned an unsigned number. And this will be return some action. So at this point, we're, we're actually throwing away the, the count here, which is not really what we want to do. Um, but I think that's OK. Uh, this action of the locus A. Um, invalid, right, undefined command. Uh, okay, so we need a an action <laughs> that's like undefined command, um, I think. Hold on, let's have some more light. I think my webcam's dealing reasonably well with the, the low lighting, but I want some more light. Um, okay, so if we split, and go to actions definition. Uh, bearing in mind, this will be moved to uh, editor. Um, invalid command. And this is a string. Uh, okay, well, I, I think it's we're not going to implement copy forever in there, so I think that's okay. Um, so now we just return some keystrokes dot two string. This. Oh no, this is some action invalid command of the string. And now we don't need to do anything. Uh, so, right, so this is let action is this. Um, once we pass the command, um, we do want to clear the keystroke buffer, but not if the command is incomplete. How best would, you do, would we do this? Because basically we want we always want to parse the command. So let parsed command equals this. Um, because imagine you're the user, right? And you press a key and this code gets executed. So we need to push the key buff key to the buffer. So that's like how what characters have we stored up that are going to be Execute. So this is that will be stuff like counts, uh, the the R character from for replace, uh, whatever. Um, and keep straight buffer push. So then we pass the command. Once we so we uh, push extra key and reparse. So reparsing the command will basically like it, it will attempt to read it as a valid command, um, and parse the command. Um, and parse command has the the options of like it's either a valid command with a count, a valid action with a count, or it's invalid in some way. So it's either incomplete or, or properly invalid. Um, and if it's invalid, then we return 
then then we warn the user about that. And if it's not, then we do it. So basically, the, the only time we want to clear the keystroke buffer, or the only time we don't want to clear the, clear the buffer is if the command's incomplete. Because if the command's incomplete, the user still has characters to type and we don't want to clear. Um, so this is basically if, uh, <laughs> if, if, um, if parsed command is not equal to uh, parse, parse error incomplete. So this is like if the, the command was incomplete, then Oh yeah, so yeah, if the command is anything other than incomplete, then clear the keystroke buffer. Uh, the expected option action. Oh yeah, return the action. There. So we just return the action out of the thing. And this should compile. Um, we'll have more issues uh, later. So this is kind of like a dummy, dummy action that occurs whenever the user types an invalid command in normal mode. Uh, and in fact, I'm wondering. I think we should probably um, we should probably return the count from here. Um, so we should return u size anyway. Oh, it's going to complain quite a lot. Because um, the, the alternative is that we put the count as a parameter. Because um, basically Vim does this and Sapling should do it as well. Is that if you um, do a load of things, let's say you wanted to move three words forward, so you could go like www. Um, or you could write, type three, uh, and then in the bottom right corner, it's like, oh yeah, there's three stacked up. W, and it would do the jump, it would do it all in one go. Um, which is super nice if you've got like 33 Ws. Um, if that was a useful thing I wanted to do, then I would do it. Um, so at this point, this is just like, we map this just straight into sum. Um, action sum okay a to sum a um, and instead of this we need uh, well the invalid command was executed once um, so we do this and we pass one out through here um, and now this will be complaining again because the transition function as defined in state doesn't has a, has a different type parameter so u size action type in try and then the quit. Uh, it should also return u size action and returning the count and command that should be executed. Stroke to be consistent. Okay, um, so I think normal mode is now finished, right? And the code is a heck of a lot simpler because we basically, well, I mean, I guess we've palmed the work off to uh, the to editor itself, right? Because editor is in charge of e executing these uh, actions now. Um, so this we we now just pull this back into count action again um, and we want to execute the action and I don't want to inline this so we're just going to push this off to a, 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 a function that doesn't exist uh, let's call it execute action and it's count action so it basically takes these two things as parameters so execute action mut mutable self count, new size, action, action. 
um, except I don't think we've imported this yet. So we should, so we'll move that into editor, create. If we, oh yeah, it's use normal mode action. Okay, so uh, execute a given action and perform the necessary one. Right, okay, uh, and this does nothing. So if I were to compile uh, this code, then it would perform very badly because we need at least some way of uh, breaking them. Oh, that would be a good reason to have um, this in here. Uh, okay, so we, I don't think we need the state, the quit state anymore. Um, uh, actually, let's mark this as to do and come back to it. Uh, we don't need quit anymore. Um, because the thing is, quit now isn't a state transition. Quit is like, you, you make the action to quit the editor. Um, so we don't need to do this. We don't need is quit at all either. Um, in fact, I can delete it and then it will give us a proper error. Um, and we don't need the quit state either. Um, it's all complaint. Oh, I should put my phone on silent. Let's do that. Phone on silent. There we go. Uh, right. Uh, okay, so we need to execute an action, and that's basically the same as uh, temp rs. Um, we just want to copy this. Uh, now we can get rid of temp rs. Okay, right, we have mega big issues. So, first of all, action um, quit, then this is the only state, like if we have got quit, then we return true. Oh, that's gonna complain, okay, we need brackets. Um, and I, this needs to return some Boolean value that's like, should we quit the editor or not? Um, or not the editor. So in the case of quit, we return true, uh, and in every other case, we return false. Uh, if we didn't already return true, then because uh, yeah, I sapling shouldn't just quit when the user unless so but yeah basically we don't want to return true ever until unless the user actually wants to quit uh, the user explicit asks to quit uh, okay so now tree is just self dot tree. Uh, we could just make it a, a definition here. So like let tree equals self dot tree. Uh, right, so that'll stop these from complaining. Side. Ah, okay, right, let's use create core. Okay, yeah, right. Um, so if we write, uh, this is not relevant anymore. Uh, so in the case of command mode, instead of returning the new thing, we don't need this anymore. 
because command mode is its own action. Then we say self dot uh, uh, what is it self it, yeah so we want to set state to um, a command mode state okay and the import doesn't work um, missing match arm okay right that's fine Okay, so self.file path, this is just like the uh, error whack-a-mole at the moment. Uh, file.write all. Why is that not working? Ah, uh, there'll be some import that I've missed. So let's edit it, normal mode. What's it? Ah, oh, stood IO prelude. That will be. I think we don't need to import. Io. Oh, and now this is fine. Okay, right. So, uh, right, all we've got now is the missing match arm here and the fact that the command mode state is not defined because we deleted them. Well, we kind of hid the module from the site. Uh, so, what does the compiler say? Five errors. Oh, we needed uh, we needed IO basically. <laughs> I think it's the the upshot. We need to dot IO. Three previous errors. Okay, right, that's good. Um, command mode is not found. Command mode is not found. Okay, right. So the first two are the fact that we hit the command mode module, and the last one is the fact that is quit is no longer defined. Um, and is quit has kind of been replaced by um, this here. So we say like, if um, let me is quit equals false. Uh, oh, there's probably a nicer way of doing this. Um, Actually, yeah, we could just say let is quit equals this, and then if is quit to f dot. Uh, um, and then if we're in here, oh no, is quit is not defined. If we're in here, um, if the user asks to quit, then quit after logging the block messages. Okay, that's down to two errors and they're only because command mode is a thing. Uh, and in fact, we, oh yeah, this is great. Like you can see how many imports are disappearing now um, because it, it was kind of unnecessary for normal mode to have to know like how to execute all of these random commands. Um, or like do these random operations on the editor, um, and if it get it gets it's okay if normal mode can only ever um, if it can only ever modify things in the file or like in the, the current buffer, right? Like moving the cursor around, whatever. Basically modifying the the tree storage um, in our case. Um, but the thing is, if normal mode needs to do anything else, uh, like I don't know, move between windows, like in Vim, Control W J you can move between a window without doing edit mode. That's something beyond just editing the tree. Um, so then you end up with like this weird situation where you need to, uh, normal mode needs access to all of editors fields because it, it tries to move, like if it needs to do situations, in situations like that, if it needs to perform the action, it needs to know everything about editor. And that's just like massively tight, like that, that doesn't need to be as tightly connected. Um, and if we just split that up, it'll be easier to refactor. Um, so I think now we have to make command mode a thing. Um, although we could chase, we could just remove all of these unnecessary things. Could we know? Let's leave them. And then if we go to command mode, pretty much it's just this transition. Transition. Let's make auto complete do that. 
and let's do it. Spicy. Okay, right. Um, so we've got some errors, but I think these are. This is just. Um, this is fine. This is just. Uh, this is just simple things that we need to do. Where's normal mode? Uh, hold on, what, what even is going on? So, oh, the first one is we just need to import config, right? And that's create config, config, um, editor, editor. Oh yeah, we don't need editor anymore. That's interesting. Um, I'd rather these be as two separate things. Use create. And that will be reformatted. Okay. Um, again, we don't need this anymore. Uh, right, and we've imported action. That's okay. So, what's the next thing we need to do? Okay, so we need a uh, transfer back to normal mode thing for any of these. Um, perhaps we could just do that if the... Do we need to handle this case? So in the case where you press enter, right, you either have a, um, so we parse the command um, and, and again, so nothing happens, right? Um, so this is basically equivalent to returning none. Um, uh, and this is, if we push a, a character then, uh, no, no command is executed, so we just return, oops, none. Uh, if we press backspace, no command is executed, so we just return none. Um, in fact, we could just like make the default path out of this return none. Uh, except for this case, which we need like a um, some return to action, and, and now we don't have a thing for return to normal mode. Um, so, uh, normal mode action, act -wain. Uh we, we have command mode now, so, but we want uh, exit to normal. Uh, so, and this switches sapling into normal mode, but doesn't perform an action. So now this just exits to normal mode. Oh, except that we have to explicitly return. Uh, can we, is return a, can we use it as an expression? We might be able to. Uh, okay, well, yeah, and we, okay, so we have to return counts with everything. Maybe that's not the best plan, but whatever. Can't find editor. Well, this is just config. Ah, excellent. But it still seems to be complaining. Why is this import not working? Is state not public? Yeah. Oh, this should be down here anyway. Okay, so why is this not happening? Not happy. Oh, I know, I know, because if you go into command mode, this is now just command mode state default. Oh yes, and now the compiler moves on and starts giving us more errors. Tasty, we do love when this happens. Let's just whack some warnings, why not? Because um, that, that'll be nice and satisfying. Uh, 
editor mod, we do have some unused imports, I think. Yep, we do. Uh, righty righty, source editor state also has some unused imports. And Oh yeah, edit in normal mode, we'll have a whole bunch of them because we moved a load of code out of it. Um, missing match. On. Oh yeah, we'll have a load of them, those errors to clean up. Don't need this, don't need side anymore. Okay, excellent. Right, we've got more... things to sort out. Where's source editor? Ninety-six match. Incompatible types. Right. Why? Oh, I think we just need to early return out of this. I think it's that's still a little bit hacky, but you know. Oh, <laughs> I think we got rid of one of the things. I need to import this. Right, excellent. Uh, this needs to borrow because we took away the clone interface. Missing match arm, right, okay. Oh, some very wide error messages. Oh, and this is basically, oh, because we're borrowing now, we need to just deref a load of things. Or we could deref it in the match, but. This is kind of the same. Uh, action, right. Oh, okay, so exit to normal mode. Uh, we now have a few more. Uh, I think quit and write should go next to each other. So if we were asked to change state, then do so. So this is action. It's not command mode, it's exit to normal mode. Okay. Uh, this is going to return false as well. We should probably uh, do this. This, this is normal mode state. That'll be one of them. Oh, interesting. There's... There are some errors. Oh, ouch. Ah, oh, okay, so invalid command doesn't log anything. Uh, oh yeah, okay, because in, an invalid command just does nothing. Okay, maybe we should just log the messages here and then make everything have type void. I mean, we could, um, could get around this uh, by log message. So 
that happier? Uh, yeah, so we could get around this by splitting action further. So you have, we'd have like action, um, uh, like actions that only modify the tree or whatever. Um, that might be easier, perhaps. Uh, and now we don't have to return false all the time. Uh, and command, an invalid command will do nothing. Ah, uh, and now we just need to, we just add a load of enum variants and didn't keep everything up to date. going on here. So the compiler is complaining because we parsed the command and then moved the resulting action into action before returning. Um, hmm. How do we do that? Um, oh, I, I've got an idea. If we, um, if we just do this check first, um, that is complete is this expression. Then it's fine. Uh, and yeah. Okay, right. So what we've got now, we've just got uh, we just got these to deal with, and that's this is just like figuring out what to write. Uh, so invalid command, I think. Invalid command dot to string. And what's, what else are we missing? Does it tell us? Exit to normal mode. Okay, right. Uh, right, so that should be happy. And now we've just got these, which is action, action normal mode. Or oh, what is it? Exit. This is state transition and then the last one I believe the last remaining one is invalid command All right and this is action action invalid command boy we have a lot of actions okay uh, category do we have a category invalid Undefined, perhaps. Uh, is this ever used? No, I think this is invalid. <gasps> OMG, the code compiles. What? So in theory, do the unit tests compile? Interesting. No, they don't. Okay, I know why they don't, but let's just run it anyway. Oh. Okay, so everything is back to working. Ooh. Uh, right. 
Okay, but well, so that was that was some productive refactoring. Uh, what do we even do? <laughs> oh, get diff. Oh boy, okay, there'll, there'll be loads of stuff. I'm not going to fill the screen with that. Um, okay, well, so we haven't, we haven't implemented, uh, I think I'm going to call it there. It's an hour and a half, and it's, that's plenty of time. Um, but, so yeah, we've implemented, we haven't implemented command mode much more, but the the whole like editor state transition has been like massively simplified um so yeah for those people who went around at the start um i think that the sapling live streams will be once a month rather than once every week because it's just like once a week is too often it doesn't need to be that quick that many um and the rest will be either live streams live coding for other projects um or it will be playing Minecraft, I think, or other video games, which will just be hopefully more relaxed. Um, might be a bit confusing for the people who are subscribed and like I make two types of content, um, but you know I'll deal with that. I'll, I can make two YouTube channels if like the gaming bit is really popular or whatever. But I don't expect that to happen, really. Uh, I don't think it will. It, it only happens to very few people, um, and you need a certain amount of luck to get big at anything. Um, so yeah, I think I'm going to call it here. It's been nice having you all. I'll see you. See you. Uh, yeah, I, it, it depends. I'll be streaming again next week, but it will be Minecraft instead. Um, so bye.